Hey everyone, in this tutorial we will create a multi-biome island consisting of five different biomes. Badlands, desert, forest, taiga and some ocean biomes. I will use the ultimate brush bundle to generate the terrain which can be found in the description together with the download of the world builder file. Let's get started. We go to file, new world and we name the world and check the Minecraft version. Now we set the world size, world painting will show you how long it takes to walk across it. Then for our presets we have hilly for smooth terrain but flat for custom builds is recommended. Lastly, under surface select bare grass to avoid auto generated flowers. Then we have created our world. To import a height map we perform similar steps under import new world from height map. We then select our height map and select the correct version even if it was already selected. Then we adjust the high mapping manually to its maximum, 65535. Then for terrain, we again select bare grass and voila, we have generated our height map. Now everything is set up and you'll see all the different folders and brush options on the right hand side. Let's begin by shaping an island. For this, we select a mountain brush and use the high tool to lower the lens. To carve out the island shape, right click to remove terrain. Let's get started. All right, let's get started with the sculpting process. As I work, you'll be able to see which brush from the brush bundle I'll be using. It's all visible on screen, so feel free to follow along or try out the same ones yourself. While shaping the train, I'll be switching between different brushes to add variety and detail. You can rotate your brush by holding ALT and the scroll wheel. And you can also change the brush size by simply using the scroll wheel. It's super quick and really helps with fine tuning your shapes. Now, something important to keep in mind while sculpting is the location of your brush. Keep the brush still while applying it and try to avoid overlapping too much in the same areas because that can quickly lead to visual noise and make the terrain feel messy. I see this happen quite a lot, especially when rushing. If you do notice some unwanted overlapping or rough patches, you've got a couple of solutions to fix it. You can use a smooth tool to clean things up, or if you want a faster and cleaner result, you can use the Fixify script by Simon. It's a really handy tool that does the job automatically. I've included a link to it in the description. Now it's time to start painting the biomes. I'm going to begin by blocking out some rough outlines using the circle brush. This helps set the general shape and layout of each biome. Once that's done, I'll switch to a more refined brush to add smaller patches and details, especially around the edges where the biomes blend together. This adds some more natural and organic feel to the transitions. Lastly, we're going to apply the beach mime to all terrain below 64. A simple trick here is to move the brush in a small one block increment while slightly decreasing the angle. This gives a really smooth and natural looking shoreline that blends nicely with the rest of the terrain. Now we're going to start painting the terrain based on the designated biomes. For this step, we'll only be using angle selection to guide our painting. A good rule of thumb I like to follow is grass doesn't grow on slopes steeper than 50 degrees. So anything steeper than that should be left for rock or other materials. Other than that, it's pretty much free real estate. Let's add a river to this area. We'll do this by creating a custom ground cover layer with negative thickness. That allows us to actually carve into the terrain instead of building on top of it. Now a couple of important settings here. Make sure to set the variation to zero and set the width to two or larger. This gives you access to the custom shape controls. Once that's set up, you can start painting the river by hand. I'm using the square brush, but feel free to use any custom brush. Now it's time to start working on the objects and plans across the map. We'll begin by creating a new object layer and from there we can select a few schematics that we want to use. To build a biome that really feels alive and immersive, I recommend including a mix of large trees, small trees, bushes and rocks. 
This variety gives the biome depth and character. I've listed some of my favorite schematic packs in the description if you need a good starting point. As for the settings, make sure everything is set to out of position and don't forget to extend the foundation to the ground. That way, objects won't float or clip into the terrain and you can also tweak how frequently certain schematics appear by adjusting their individual spawn rates. We also control the overall density of the object layer. For forest, I would usually go with a density between 50 and 100. If you're working on plains or open fields, a much higher number like 500 gives better results without feeling too empty. Next, let's move on to the plant layer. We'll use another ground cover layer for this and head over to the complex settings. There, we'll switch the pattern to simplex, which helps generate those nice natural looking flower patches. Finally, just adjust, just adjust the count setting until it feels balanced, so the flowers stand out but don't completely take over the landscape. Then we simply apply our layers to the correct biome using a patchy mask for the objects to create this nice variety and a full mask for the plants. And just like that, we've reached the final step, exporting the terrain. Here you can choose the underground material, add caves and even enable features like dripstone or lush caves. You can also set the border type, void, ocean or naturally generated. You can also adjust how many ores you want to appear underground. This is just to name a couple of possibilities. Once everything looks good, you're ready to export. Hey everyone, let's check the terrain now. So first off, we're spawned in a plains or forest biome um, and as we can see these objects are nicely placed they're not floating uh, there's good grass you can really see the patches that we made using the ground cover layers which is really cool and are way better than the randomized plant layer uh, the next up you can see the transitions if we go from above you can roughly see the outlines that we made with the sphere brush but then these small nippets of planes or forest uh, help sell the illusion that it is indeed a nice transition like parts like these really really help it furthermore the badlands biome is looking really nicely uh, apologies for the distance horizon that's loading in and the LEDs that's quite low but you can see from above that we have these nice desert like structures as a base and then on top of it we have generated these awesome looking badlands pillars and the coloring is just really simple we just use the mesa default layering by world painter then we can see the pyramids and i really like to use pyramid brushes over the pyramid tool since they give these nice irregularities they're not completely a pyramid they're broken down a tiny bit and you can go in here with uh, and add a lot more texturing or other fancy uh, fancy stuff then we have got these nice small oasises that are alongside the beach and in the water of course we have these coral layers with seagrass and tall seagrass on the higher altitudes uh, this is done using the popular layer and is included in the world painter file it's really nifty and a smart trick to very quickly generate uh, sceneries same as the sugar canes that you see on the edges we didn't add those manually they are added using the populate layer then moving on to the desert we can see if distance horizons wants to load we can really see these nice dune like formations and just rugged terrain in general and if we then look from above again we can see how they are placed like you can see a brush over here you can see a brush over there and over there however all that matters essentially is the player's perspective and from, from a player's perspective you are unable to see any kind of brushwork which is the best part then moving on to the lake we've also used the populate layer just to get these nice sea grasses and the layer underneath is just a mixture of mud and coarse dirt so that's really nice if we then move on to a river system we can already from above see how nice it's looking it looks like a proper river uh, 
with nice edges, good coloring, and even the smallest ones look very, very nice. You can see from the edge that they're smooth and just flow into the terrain quite nicely. One problem is that we have used regular water and therefore we will get borders like this. You can use flowing water, but what it does is it likes to generate squares. So that block of water will try to connect with this one and therefore uh, the water will appear here. So yes, it's a bit of a drawback, but I like this method more than the other. Then moving on to the mountains, I have added more snow to it to just give it a bit of contrast and just some different texturing. The mountains itself are not the most spectacular ones, but for this tutorial, they have served a purpose as to how to use these brushes. In the brush pack, there are over 200 different kinds of mountains, and for everything, there's something. Do you want uh, French Alps? Something. Do you want Rocky Mountains? There's something. Do you want something Himalaya-like? There's something. For any kind of mountain, there is a brush. And the nice thing is that Mountain Pack 4 includes snow and float lines. So you can even have proper designated flow or snow lines on your terrain. Then for these nice nifty tricks that we have used, we can see that the sweet berry bushes uh, are not fully grown yet and therefore give these nice variations. Oh. Also besides that, you can really nicely see how the different layers of trees, bushes and rocks help with generating a nice biome or atmosphere. Um, then lastly we take a look at these forests since these are the same as the taiga using different heights in trees, bushes, flowers, rocks you can, go, you can create really nice atmospheres like this. So with that being said I would like to thank you for watching the tutorial and I'll see you next time. Cheers! One thing I almost forgot to show you is the existence of the caves and that they are fully decorated. Let's take a look at spectator mode. If we go down, you can see that there are lush caves, cave systems all around. You can see that there's mushrooms, ores. And let's find a dripstone cave if we can find it. Uh, we have dripstone caves. Uh, and I believe also deep dark is added. So with that, I would like to conclude the video once again. And cheers.